this video is to show you what's going on here only. You might get killed later on after watching it. The responsibility is strictly of the killers. Hey, um, you know, you know, uh, since you brought up uh, an interesting topic and uh, asked nicely, you know, I've decided to explain evolution to you and because I've noticed, I've noticed that uh, many theists, Christians, often like to raise confusion, you know, in the understanding of evolution. So I'd like to, uh, to, you know, to make a response with, you know, dismystifying, you know, because evolution has a, has a flaw, and that flaw, um, it's a random mutation concept. You know, it cheats on logic, and, uh, and often, you know, theists and the religious people in general like to bring up that, you know, to debunk, to debunk uh, evolution. And, uh, yeah, well, you're asking, uh, many people in the media, you know, they talk about evolution and they always bring up uh, that evolution is a random process about the random evolution stuff. Well, I'm here to explain. I'm going to explain to that why that part of evolution, it's, it's wrong. Well, <laughs> well, I'm not not a religious people at all. I'm a man in the 80s. I'm a secular person. You know, I'm a strictly scientific person. I'm an honest person, if you might say that. Okay. Uh, okay, let me explain. Uh, you know, the evolution theory um, basically it says that uh, present life evolved gradually from other past life forms in the course of uh, the last, you know, billion years here on Earth. You know, uh, from uh, basic primitive primaveral single cell organisms to what we we know today as ourselves, you know, other animals and plants. So, very basically, that's the theory of evolution right there. You know, uh, very proven and and uh, by honest observation of reality and nature. Okay, that's pretty logic and self-evident. However, you might ask, what's the mechanism? You know, what's the mechanism or process of evolution? Let's say through random mutation and survival of the fittest. Now, how the fittest survive? You know, the popular science, you know, says but just by surviving. You know, they say by surviving. How do fittest survive? And they answer back to you by surviving. Okay, does anyone see something wrong with that? Well, the question hasn't been answered. Uh, what's the mechanism here? I mean, how they survive? By surviving? Mm, okay, to get it straight, okay. To survive in the road of evolution is to successfully reproduce along. Okay, that's, that's right. So what makes a fit animal the fittest? The reproductively successful? Mm. So it's the reproductive success of the reproductively successful? Okay. Yeah, sorry, but that's a tautology. You know, nothing has been answered. Uh, it's like saying the sky is blue because the sea is blue. And the sea is blue because the sky is blue. Yeah, tautology. Yeah, uh, you know, how that would happen, you know, by... I can rationalize on that, you know, by reflecting each other's blue light. Okay, uh, you know, all this, that's circular thinking, and it's starting to give me, you know, a headache here. Uh, so, okay, let, let's, let's get to the point. So, what's the mechanism here? So, for example, how bad, for example, uh, manage to survive, I mean, manage to, to, to develop wings to survive? by surviving. So we have an example here. Uh, let's take the example of, of a bat. How a bat, you know, managed to develop wings to survive? By surviving? No, no. This is serious. Uh, but, okay, fine, fine. Let's rationalize on that. So since we're ignoring a mechanism here, let's say that animals survive just because they survive. Okay, you know, 
the mutations happen of whatever organic errors. And a very, very, very lucky animal finds an error or errors to go with, it, with its body or, or needs. Well, I mean, what are the odds here? Now, of these accidental mutations, the animal now has an extra something. And hey, if he or his offspring survive and they're lucky enough, we could get a fully functional pair of wings out of chance, say, billion years or maybe less than that. Okay, okay, let's do the math here. Okay, Th that's a hypothesis. That's the new Darwinism hypothesis. Has it been proven? Have we ever seen this taking place? Actually, no. You know, species, you know, the process of speciation. Okay, let me define species here. Before, before anything else. Um, you know, species is, you know, that stage of evolutionary progress at which the once actually or potentially interbreeding array of forms becomes segregated into two or more arrays which are physiologically incapable of interbreeding. Okay, that's, that's the definition of species, that's the strong definition, or that is, that's the objective definition that cannot be distorted, you know, so we can have like a, a strong base here, you know, without any distortion of what species are, you know, you know, very ambiguous, you know, a lot of uh, so-called scientists like to use ambiguous, you know, definitions so they can, you know, distort the whole thing. But so now we know what species is, you know, so species gradually, you know, changing, you know, by random mutation into another has not been observed and no examples are known, you know. Actually, uh, you, after this, you can do your own research and uh, you can check that out. And I have some in the description box. I have some references, some references, and uh, you can check those to see where I'm lying or not. Well, at least I'm making sense here. Okay, what about in microevolution? Microevolution has can be observed here at the present, and uh, we can actually see things, not just make estimates on something there that, uh, you know, it's not um, some things that are not, you know, uh, based on reality. You know, just make some numbers, throw some numbers out of nothing. So, can we see what's there? Yeah, yeah. Let's see what's in microbiology. But, you know, I'm so... Don't make me go there. You know, new Darwinists, you know, new Darwinists will, will kill me for sure. Thank goodness I'm a ninja. Yeah. Okay. Nope. Not even in micro microbiology. For example, like when microorganisms uh, uh, like bacteria grow resistance to substance or change to feed the environment, it is observed that, uh, for example, that the winning variation of the bacteria was already there, but became dominant because it managed to survive when the other variations couldn't. You know, no random mutation had been have been observed in such cases. But you might ask, what about in a setup? You know, what about in a setup uh, which just exists one variation of a bacteria? Can we see mutation taking place? You know, in a isol an, an isolated strain of bacteria, can we see the mutation taking place? Can we see the random selection in play here? You know, let's, let's see what happens. This is where it becomes interesting. For example, it has also been observed, you know, that isolated bacteria in a dish full of some substance or nutrient that the bacteria can use for food, you know, the bacteria will mutate in order to survive and feed on that substance. And all that, even without reproducing, because the bacteria is in a stage of star starvation, they can't reproduce. You know, they, they, they can reproduce, reproduce. Actually, before reproducing, they will, you know, develop that mutation. They will produce that mutation before they are able to reproduce.